I felt like I had to leave a lot behind and I struggled. I really, really struggled with that. Um, and that just led me down to a very dark place, unfortunately. Those dark days nearly swallowed up Laura Hutchinson until a critical decision helped pull her out of the abyss and push her towards an unexpected journey, as she explains in this story from Working Mom Warrior. Laura Hutchinson is known and loved by thousands who follow her decluttering advice on YouTube. That's how I met her, and believe me, I could use her advice. I'm a mom who struggles daily with clutter control. I'm Diane Mocha, a reporter for Working Mom Warrior, where mothers of all different backgrounds share the ups and downs and hacks of juggling career and kids. We offer support to stressed out working mothers by uncovering the hidden stories of successful women I interview, like Laura, who created a popular brand teaching people how to get your shit together, but didn't always have hers together at all. Before my daughter came along, you know, I had my legal career and I had my home and, you know, was married and kind of in my head, I was set for life. You know, I had all of the things. Um, and she came along and my world just kind of turned upside down in a great way, but also in a way that I very much struggled with because I lost my identity as a person, as an individual. After her daughter was born, Laura wanted to go back full time to her career as a lawyer in her native Ireland. I continued to practice for a short while and then I took a year off so that I could focus on raising her. Um, during that year, I suffered from postnatal depression, so it was about a year and a half of just awfulness. Laura says at the time, she didn't realize she was suffering from postpartum depression. There are certain things that back then I just couldn't do. Going to a playground, for me, it's just the amount of effort involved in that. My head just wasn't in the right place to do things like that. Getting out of the house was very, very difficult. In my head, I had this image that I needed to be the perfect mother and I needed to stay home with her all the time and, you know, cook and bake and craft and all of those things that I'm just not good at. And I didn't get help. I didn't speak to anyone. Obviously, people, certain people in my life recognized that something was not right. Laura's silent struggle with depression could have turned catastrophic for her and her family. Her husband tried desperately to help, but Laura resisted. He had recommended that we get some form of childcare. Somebody who could maybe come over for two or three hours um, and help out. And like I said, I pushed against that for a long time because I felt, no, I don't want anyone else stepping in. I don't want, you know, this is my job. You know, I, I felt guilty about letting someone else take my job. And I think eventually we did get that childcare and she did just a few hours a week for us. And that was the beginning for me of realizing that I could let go some of the control and some of that mental anguish, just a short break, just for me. Laura's critical decision to let someone watch her daughter so she could take a break wasn't just a lifesaver, it gave her time to develop a creative side that changed the course of her life. And I've always loved to write, um, so it, it was kind of natural for me to do that and to write down my thoughts and ideas and what was working for me and what wasn't working for me. She decided to share those thoughts publicly in a blog to help others who were confronting the same demons. So I started the blog just as a way of <sighs> almost like getting back some of my mental health. I mean, that was something that was just for me and I, it just took off. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting it for me. It was just a creative outlet at the time, but it grew into this huge thing. The blog became more popular as Laura revealed her new goal to organize her house, eventually adopting the KonMari method to get rid of anything that didn't spark joy. A lot of the blog and stuff like that was about regaining that control and like I said the Con Marie thing was what turned it around for me and like just decluttering and feeling like I had I had control over at least one part of my life. The blog spawned a YouTube channel and a course on becoming more productive and efficient and became Laura's new career, one she didn't have to quit 
when her husband was transferred to the United States. Are you at a point where you're close to what you made as a lawyer? It's still building up slowly, um, but I am now at the stage where I am earning just as much as I was. Wow. So. How did you regain your identity, separate from being mom, as a successful, intelligent career woman that you are? But if you go somewhere and tell people, oh, I'm a YouTuber or a blogger, a mommy blogger, you know, there's millions of mommy bloggers. You get a lot of eye rolls. You were probably rolling your eyes to yourself for a while. Yes, and it took me a long time. It's actually only recently, I'll be honest, that I stopped calling myself a lawyer. Um, for a long time, I still told people I was a lawyer um, because I think that that kind of, it feels like a step down to people, you know, to go from lawyers, high flying career, traditional, well respected, you know, well paying job to go from that to blogging. <laughs> For most people, that seems like a huge step down. And I think I struggled with what other people would think of that. I, I thought other people would see me as a failure. And because I already felt like that as a mother, I did not want to put myself through that again in another area of my life. So for a long time, to be perfectly honest, I still called myself a lawyer. And it's only now that I'm, you know, five years into it, that I do tell people, I'm like, hey, I'm a blogger and YouTuber. Now Laura shares all kinds of adventures on her platforms, from meeting mermaids with her daughter to riding in a helicopter on a family vacation. And she cautions other working moms to avoid the pitfalls that almost destroyed her life. To be honest, that time is a blur in my life. I don't remember too much from it, but I do remember eventually starting to come out the other side, realizing that I needed to do something that was just for me, realizing that I needed to get some help, getting help even just on a very small scale opens up your eyes to how much you're struggling and how easy it is to let go of some of that burden. So I would say start very small, get someone in to help, I mean, even if you can't afford it, get a family friend, um, somebody who can just come over and you can say, hey, would it be okay if you watched the baby for a few minutes while I just go have a shower? That kind of help and support is what motivates Laura and me to produce videos to inspire you to conquer your challenges. So check out the next video from Working Mom Warrior and How to Get Your Shit Together and subscribe to our channels to escape the shackles of stress and perfectionism that burden too many women as you share your comments about overcoming the working mom blues.